Hi, good evening everybody and Shavua Tov. Today we'll try to summarize the three shiurim of Saturday, Sunday and tomorrow. It is one topic, the topic of Kiddushin. Kiddushin, the translation, loosely, engagement. However, the roots of Kiddushin is from the same roots of Kodesh, Holy. And the obvious question, what is the connection between holiness and engagement in a context of the institution of marriage? So, I'll start with a story. Exactly 60 years ago, on Gimel Tammuz, a group from Toronto, local yeshiva, yeshiva Sner Yisrael, came to the Rebbe on Yechidus, on audience. And the Rebbe said to them, since I understand that you guys are studying that year, the tractate of Kiddushin. Kiddushin is the same tractate where the Rambam derived all the rules, all the customs, all the details about engagement, marriage, commitments of the husband towards his spouse, commitments of the wife towards her husband, all of these aspects are being dealt in Hilchois issues, but obviously the Talmudic source where the Rambam took most of the Halochois is from the Maseches Kiddushim. So the Rebbe told them that any type of a relationship that we are familiar over here between a husband and wife, they are reflecting a way higher, superior relationship that is being referred to the relationship between us, nation of Israel, and God Almighty. Same way as there is very specific rulings, customs, rituals associated with marriage between a physical husband and wife, there are this type of relationship that exists and the details of the engagement that exists in spiritual worlds as well. Everybody heard in the pre-Matan Torah events where the angels came to God Almighty and requested that the Torah will be given to them and they were very well aware that obviously most of the ruling of the Torah since it pertains to physical object cannot really be exercised by angels which are spiritual entities. So obviously their intention was to learn the Torah in the spiritual, conceptual way, the way that it's being learned today by Neshamot in Gan Eden. And for that reason, they felt in to learn Torah in such a way will be also possible for them as well. After this introduction, we know that the any marriage, any relationship consists of two stages. Stage number one is the engagement. And stage number two is the marriage. And the beginning of Maseches Kiddushin starts with the following words. Hoisho, the lady, the wife, Nikness, she is being acquired, Lebailo, to her husband, in three ways. And there is Kesef, it's a valuable, at least of one puta, it's a monetary unit that should be possible to purchase an item that a person can feed himself and rescue himself out of starvation. This is kesef. Then there is a possibility where a person can trigger the engagement via star, via document. And then there is the Bia, a possibility where there is an actual intimate relationship, 
the taking place and that consumes the engagement. Though it is a legal way, but nevertheless, it was banned by custom in order to promote modesty and to stay away out of anything that is against this spirit of modesty. Now, we all know, everybody who opened up Masechet Avot, that there is three ways that the world is standing upon. The world, the spiritual world of each and every one of us as individuals, and the entire community as one big collective. And this is Torah, the idea of studying, where mostly it involves the intellectual aspects of our existence. Then there is Gimilut Hasadim, which involves a external contribution to others. And then there is the idea of Avodah. Avodah refers to the service of prayer. And obviously when a person really prays the way he should be praying, so his entire body is involved with it. So the Rebbe compares, makes a line, draws a line between those three pillars that the world stands on and those three ways that Hoisho, that the person, that the lady is being nickness acquired lebailo and in acting the act of Kiddushin, the act of engagement. First of all, there is what we say Kesef. Kesef is an external contribution. Then there is more internal, but it involves only one aspect of the person, which is the intellectual aspect, the idea of study Torah. And there is a third one, which is involves the actual body of the person, the entire body, which is called bio. Now, what is interesting is that while a person can assign a shaliach, a messenger, a emissary, an agent, that he will be acting on his behalf and he will be able to affect the process of engagement via this proxy, via this agent. If a, obviously, when a person is Mekadesh, is in triggering the engagement via bio, via intimate act, he cannot appoint another person to do it for him. He must do it for himself. So we see that the entire mitzvot, which the mitzvot are also, before we are conducting any mitzvah, we are reciting in our prayer, Asher Kideshanu, the term Kideshanu, sanctify us. The idea of Kodesh comes from the roots Hekdesh. When a person is dedicating an item to the property of the temple, it's called Makdish, and it turns to be Hekdesh. When God Almighty designated, separated the Jewish people before Matan Torah, he said, Ve'atem tihiyuli, you will be for me a kingdom of priests, Vegoi Kadosh and a holy nation. Lama wa Goi Kadosh. Goi is a nation, Kadosh is a holy nation. So the idea when a person is doing any type of a mitzvah, by getting involved of the mitzvah, he is elevating the item, the object from being mundane, being whole, into a holy item. When a lady involves or when a person when two parties are involved in triggering a holy engagement a kiddushin so the reason why it's called kiddushin the act consists of two stages there is one part is the financial aspect of it like any transaction that is being done where two people are exchanging commitments and obligation towards each other, there is always a legal act that is enacting the new status. That's one way. 
Then there is another aspect to the engagement, which is called Kiddushin. And the reason why it's called Kiddushin, Osarlo Akule Al Mekehekdesh. He, she became restricted upon the entire world as Hekdesh. Same way as a mundane item, until I'm dedicating it to the temple, it is accessible to everyone. In a moment after it was designated to Hekdesh, it becomes already restricted, and anybody who benefits from it becomes a moyel, he embezzling the property of Hekdesh. So same way, a lady, at the moment that she is Mekudeshes, that she is engaged, any one, on a minute before, she was permitted to engage with relationship with the entire world. At the moment that she is engaged, not only that she is restricted to have relationship with anybody outside her husband, but in fact, any such relationship are exposing her to the uh, liability of chenek, uh, or in case that she's a baskoyhen, it's even safer. So each and every uh, this act of Kiddushin is a serious act. So therefore, the first ten chapters that we will be covering of the Book of Issues, we have started on Thursday night the general history, how the ritual and how the engagement necessity was introduced post Matan In the second chapter, the Rambam introduces a very long glossary of terms, ranging from terms what is considered to be an adult, what is a minor, and what is considered to be an organus, and what is a tumtum, what is a simonim, and what is bigeres, what is nairo. It's an entire over 20 terms that are necessary to have a clarity since they will keep becoming, repeating themselves over the rules of Hilchus issues and over other rules as well through the entire Rambam. As we've seen a few times in the Rambam that certain halochois, they are come in a totally unexpected location. Like we remember last week we have learned the rules of Halel in the Hilchus Hanukkah we learned originally the rules of the obligation of a lady in Hilchai Savoy And in the glossary over here, there are so many terms that will be important and vital, not be way beyond Hilchai's issues. They will be applicable for the rest of the Sefer HaRambam, Sefer Hayad. In the third chapter, the Rambam deals with the process of Kiddushin. That first of all, it must to be a giver and a receiver. The person, he, the man, he is the one who needs to give the kesef, the valuable of a shove puto or more to his, to the lady. And he is the one who needs to declare you are Mekudeshes engaged to me in this particular item that the engagement is taking place. If she is the one who gives and she is the one who declares, as a general rule, there is no Kiddushin, there is no engagement. There is one exceptional rule, and this is very important to note, that Sometimes, since she is the one who needs to benefit from the actual transaction, so sometimes the benefit will be by her when a third party will receive it. For example, she loves a third party and she says, I will be engaged to you in case that a third party will benefit. In such a case, she will be Mekudeshes. There is also one exception that if a person is a Odom Choshuv, if the person is a very, very important man, and 
she will gain lots of enjoyment of benefit that such an important man of the stature of her future bride will be accepting a gift from her. So in such a case, his declaration should be that in the amount of the item I have received from you and the enjoyment that you have gained from the fact that I received a gift from you, this will be the valuable that you will be miskadeshes with. There is obviously the album covers different aspects, different possibilities where sometimes a lady when she is minor, she is below the age of 12 and a half plus the additional requirements that are required in order to make her an adult. Her father can be the one who will receive Kesef Kiddushevel, the money for her Kiddushin. It is, but while she is ad an adult, it's clearly, and this is an important rule, Ein ho'isho miskadeshes elomidaito. A consent is very critical in order for the Kiddushin to trigger. When we're dealing with consent, consent can be done in very subtle ways, and sometimes consent can be done with silent. And sometimes consent, though it may be sound like a consent, but the interpretation will be total rejection. For example, I will give a few illustrations that the Rambam presents. If a person gives to the lady the valuable, and she is silent, so obviously the Kiddushin triggers. If a lady goes in the market and she sees a person who sells vegetables, and she asks him, can you give me a vegetable? And in response, she, he tells her, well, if I will give you the vegetable, Will you marry me? Or will you be engaged to me with this vegetable I will give you? So here is, will be very interesting. If she said yes, so obviously she will be engaged. But instead to say yes, give me, give me. Give me, give me the vegetable. So her statement, give me, give me, will be interpreted as a rejection, what she's basically telling him, give me and don't play around any games with me. Get serious for a change. No. So it's a, every, every situation will be interpreted in a totally different uh, way based on the context, based on the circumstances. It is also a very important thing that also the process of engagement, like any mitzvah, involves with a bracha, and the bracha is called birkat eirusin, the blessing of engagement, and the custom is to do it on a wine, on a cup of wine, and we're proceeding with the blessing of bore pri hagefen. Another important aspect that the Kiddushin must be taking place in front of two kosher witnesses. If there is no two male kosher witnesses attending, then there is no Kiddushin over here, there is no engagement. There is also unusual type of a Kiddushin, and this is called Kiddushi Iktano Sheloi Alidei Hovio. Until now we spoke when a minor, when a girl is being engaged via her father. But let's say if the father is not around, the father is dead. Can she be engaged via herself? 
or by her brothers, her mother? And the answer, this is a very unique situation, and therefore the Kiddushin are on a standby. Which means, below the age of six, nothing is happening. Above the age of ten, then it's called Kiddushim Hanesunim Lemiun, and I'm going to explain. If the girl is above ten years old, since she is after all a minor, but she may be very well mature enough, so it is okay she can live if there is mutual consent between her and her husband. However, in any circumstances, until she turns to be an adult, if she expresses even a verbal expression of rejection, the Kiddushin are null and, null and void, and retroactively they are considered they weren't there. However, if the marriage amongst them turn out to be peaceful and nice, and then they turn to be an adults, they grew up together, so then she have lived with him, continued to live with him after 12 years old, so then it will trigger retroactively it will be considered a good marriage. So this type of marriage is taking place between the age of 10 to 12 and a half, between below the age of six under no circumstances, even if she is mature, I will not uh, entertain such marriage, but between the age of six and 10, I will assess if she is mature enough in order to introduce her to such marriage or not. There is also a very important distinction between forbidden marriages. And as we have learned the first day, there is few levels of forbidden. There is when I say forbidden, the, the most severe level of forbidden is alayos, which is called in English incest. Incest is those type of alayos in the Torah that the punishment is kores. So obviously such a person who is making a kiddushin to someone who is biblically considered incest, there is no kiddushin, there is no connection, and the engagement doesn't trigger at all. However, if a person is Mekadesh, someone of a lesser severity, of biblical severity, it's called Isuri love, that the entire prohibition is only a love. A love is a negative commandment where the punishment is lashes. So although it is restricted for them to marry, nevertheless, the Kiddushin is triggering. What is the implication? The implication is, if they have triggered, so a get is needed. Which means they're not allowed to live, but they must to divorce. Why they must to divorce? Because the engagement has triggered. So for that reason, it's called Kiddushin Toifsim Bechai Velavin. The process of engagement triggers when it is high Velavin. There is one exception that Chayve Lavin is not going to trigger, and this is in a case when a person is Mekadesh Shemeles Yovam. Shemeles Yovam is a very interesting case where a no, widow have uh, her husband died without children, and he has a brother. And she is in the stage of waiting to the brother to marry her. And at that time, someone else came and have um, and someone went, went and ahead and engaged her. In such a case, she is not really engaged, but it's called Mekudeshes Misofik. 
Kudashas Misofek, it's only a doubt whether the Kiddushin are there or not there. So there is an uh, entire chapter in uh, the fifth chapter deals with the validity or the kashus of the valuable a person is Mekadesh Eishu. It must be a halochically and legally obtained money. For that reason, if a person, for example, have robbed a valuable and the person who robbed it from, he is still after him, looking for the item, so which means he was not meyayesh, he was not giving up, and therefore this item, not only that he has robbed it, but there is a full obligation to return this item to the person who he robbed it from. So when he is Mekadesh taking this item and wants to trigger a Kiddushin, the Kiddushin are not triggering. And for that reason, let's say if a person went ahead and he was Mekadesh Aisho with, a, with an item that is stolen, and the person who stole it from was not Meyayesh, and someone else went after him and he was Mekadesh, the same Isho, she was not going to be Mekudesh's low Isho and she was not going to be engaged to the first one, she's going to be engaged to the second one because the first one is not really Kiddushin. So for that reason, it is very important that the item that he is Mekadesh, the Isho, should not only be, as you say, not stolen, not robbed, but also an item that is not kosher. If an item is forbidden, for example, chometz, if a person takes chometz on Pesach, a piece of uh, cake or a piece of chometz, since it is forbidden to benefit throughout Pesach, and he went ahead and he takes the item in his Mekadesh, so she is not Mekadesh, she is not engaged. There is one way when a person takes a forbidden item and he went ahead and sells it and he goes ahead and sells it so this proceeds it's okay for him to be Mekadesh Aisha. the only exception it will be when it comes to Avoid Azor any form of idol worship if an individual had the idol worship and exchanged it then, even though it's not the original of the Zohar, it's still forbidden to be Mekadesh the Isho, and she is not going to be Mekadesh. It is very interesting to note that Koyhanim, given the fact that they are priests and they are benefiting from different type of gifts that are given to them, some of the gifts that are given to them, it's okay for them to use it as valuables to be Mekadesh the Isho, some valuables are not. For example, if a koyhen takes from the flesh that is given to him from the offerings, and he goes ahead and to be Mekadesh Aisho, though it was given to him, the Isho is not Mekudesh's. Reason? Because it was not given to him. It was given to his mouth. All he is allowed to benefit from the flesh is only chewing and eating it. However, if the Koyhan takes Tumois or Tumas Maisel he received from others, though also Azal, a foreign person outside the Koyhan is not allowed to benefit from, nevertheless it is considered his assets. For example, there is uh, items that uh, if a person, for example, takes an item that belongs to Hekdesh. Yeah. And he goes and takes the item in his Mekadesh the Isho. So very interesting. Whether he was aware that the item is Hekdesh, so then the Isho will be Mekudeshes. He is Mon. This is the way that he is triggering the sin of embezzlement and he will be liable to bring a Korban uh, of Meilo and pay for his Meilo. But the issue will be Mekudeshes. However, if he done it 
the Maisie, if he does it intentionally, then she's not Mekudeshes, because at the moment that a person does something Behekdesh intentionally, it cannot go outside the property of Hekdesh, it's the property of Hekdesh, and uh, there is no way to take it out. So each and every situation must be, again, assessed on their own merit. There is a big part uh, that is being dealt about the importance that she should receive a tangible and a valuable item that she has haven't had till now. And I'm going to explain myself. Let's say if the lady owes to the person a dollar and the person tells her, I would love to be Mekadesh you in the dollar you owe me. The dollar that you owe me, don't owe me anymore and take it as a payment for the Kiddushin. And the answer, she is not going to be Mekudesh's reason. Because Milvo, any type of loan, by definition, Lehuitso Enitno, it was given to spend. And obviously it's not in her possession anymore. Given the fact that it's not in her possession anymore, there is no tangible item here and now that can actually trigger the Kiddushin. And for that reason, Ha Mekadesh Bemilve, it will not going to be Mekudesh. It's a very... Sometimes there is Hanoas Milve, it's a totally different thing. Let's say if a person gives her a loan and after he gave her, he tells her, I will prolong you the loan for a year or two years or five to ten years. Then, theoretically, she will be Mekudeshes. Because by prolonging a loan, time is considered to be an asset, an interest-bearing asset that will be considered actual tangible, although it may be not tangible in... Um, so called in, in our hands, but it's a very valuable that was given to her right now and gives her a direct enjoyment. It will be forbidden for a different reason because there is it looks like interest, but as far as the kiddushin, sometimes virtual enjoyment, virtual assets will be viewed and considered as an asset sufficient enough for her to be mekudesh with. There is a long discussion that ranges from the 6th, 7th, and 8th chapter. And this discussion has one headline. The condition of the condition. And I'm going to explain myself. In the Torah, in a few weeks, we will read how the representatives of the tribe of Reuven and Gad came to Moshe Rabbeinu in the 40th year that they were in the desert and they said, we love Evel Hayarden. We love the eastern side of the Jordan River because the soil is so perfect for us to raise our cattle and we have so much cattle to raise and we would love to stay over here. And then Moshe Rabbeinu turns to them and he says, how is it right for your brothers to get engaged in the war and you will be sitting on your comfort zone and um, behind? So then they said, well, if this is the case, we are willing not only to participate in the war, but pioneers, we will go in front of everybody and we'll take part in the occupation, in liberation of the land of Canaan. So Moshe Rabbeinu made a condition with them. He says, if you will follow your words and you will be in front of your brothers, so then you will come back and this land will be yours. However, if you're not going to 
follow your words and you're not going to be participating in the war so then the land is not going to be yours end of story so according to the Rambam basically this story sets up a prototype a model to define the boundaries the legal framework how a legal and binding condition is binding in other words we all know in every document there is what we call the promotional material and then there is the fine print the fine print where all the details and all the conditions and all the exemptions and all the exceptions and all the things that the most important things but they happen <laughs> to be the most important thing for you to know they're always in the fine print yeah. so in order to engage in any type of a contract there is terms and conditions so in order for a condition to be binding and valid it must have four conditions condition number one it needs to be a double condition a double condition which means what I mean double condition condition if you will do it you will get so and so if you will participate in the war you will get the land it needs to have a negative condition if you're not going to participate you're not going to get the land so if the condition happens to have to have only the negative part or only the positive side the condition is not a condition there is a second condition to a condition always the condition must precede the action. When was Moshe Rabbeinu making with them the condition? Before they entered the land of Israel, which means at the moment that Moshe would so-called give them the so-called go ahead or be silent, then suddenly in the middle of the way he says, oh by the way, the land will be given to you on this condition. It's not a condition. They, they already got the land. So it's very important for a condition to be a condition only if it's preceding the action then a third condition that the positive part of the condition must precede the negative part of the condition which means the way the double face or the, the double aspect type of condition he needs first to say if you will then so and so and only then he would say if you want then so and so so the positive must come before the negative and the fourth condition in a condition that it needs to be something what we call attainable something that is not attainable for example if I'm giving you a gift on the condition that you will fly to the fourth floor without any equipment so it's it's not a tenable condition so therefore any time that the condition is not legally binding so then the action can proceed 100 percent so for that reason when a person tells to a lady i am marrying you on the condition that i will give you a hundred dollars so in order for the condition to be binding it must to have all those four conditions that we have mentioned unless there is a few alternatives to do it when a person says the word almenas when a person says there is a few but generally any type of a condition must to have those type of four conditions then there is an entire discussion that the Rambam goes there is two types of Kiddushin that they are based on the condition sometimes the condition or the fulfillment of the condition that what will trigger the engagement until the fulfillment of the engagement the, there is nothing there so for example if a person t 
tells to a lady, you, if you gonna travel to such and such a, a place, then I'll marry you within 30 days. Let's say she travels, so the marriage will trigger only the moment that she actually travels to that place.